Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. For a while now, we've been talking about how to solve equations. And the solution sets for these equations have tended to be one or two isolated real numbers that make the equation true. So when we want to describe the solutions of, an, of one of those equations, it's been very simple to write a solution set and make a list, <coughs> excuse me, of those one or two or three values of x that make the equation true. We're now going to be turning our attention to inequalities, and you'll see what those are in a great deal more detail soon, but basically they are statements where instead of involving an equal sign, you have an inequality symbol like a greater than, a less than, a greater than or equal to, or a less than or equal to. And what we're going to discover in solving inequalities is that the solutions, the, the values that make the inequality true, are not just one or two isolated numbers, but a whole collection of numbers ranging between two points, for example. In other words, an interval of numbers. So before we can really get into that and explore that, we want to talk a little bit about a number line and how we would communicate not just one or two points on a number line, but a whole, a whole interval on that number line. So number lines you've seen for many, many years. Let me just draw one real quick, and I'm going to have it go, let's say, from negative 3 to positive 3. And let's say you wanted to communicate that you are interested in all of the real numbers that lie between, say, negative 1 and 2. So I'm interested in all of these values. That would include uh, like negative a half, it would include 1, it would include positive a half, it would include, include 1.7. All those, in fact, infinitely many values along that number line between negative 1 and 2. Now, immediately when I say that, you're going to say, well, do you mean to include the negative 1 and the 2 themselves? And that's an incredibly good question because sometimes you do want to include what we call the endpoints and sometimes you don't. If you do want to include the endpoints, what we do is on the end we write this little symbol. It looks like a bracket with square edges to it. And when we say that, what we are trying to communicate is that the two endpoints are included. I'm going to skip a little space because I want to write a little something else in here. We might also want to communicate that they're not included. So let's look at another number line. Well, one is followed by two, is it not? Let's say you're still interested in the set of numbers that run from negative 1 to 2, but you don't intend to include the negative 1 and the 2. To communicate that, instead of using square brackets, you use round parentheses, and that means that the endpoints are not included. Now it's very easy to draw a number line and communicate the idea that you're wanting all of the numbers between one place and another place and whether or not you want to include the endpoints. Uh, a little tedious to go through and draw number lines every time you want to communicate something like that. So we have a little shorthand that is called interval notation that basically recreates the picture without having to actually draw the complete number line. And it's actually pretty intuitive. If I wanted to in, uh, communicate this idea, that I'm looking at all of the numbers between negative 1 and 2, including the negative 1 and the 2, what I simply do is I kind of recreate the diagram by putting a square bracket to indicate that I'm starting at negative 1, and then just put a comma and the number 2 to show that I'm ending at 2. It's sort of a shorthand picture of the picture without drawing the entire thing. And if I did not want to include the endpoints, I would just adjust that slightly like this. I'd put the round parentheses on either end. And that describes an interval of numbers. Let's look at a few other options. 
So we could certainly, for example, want to talk about an interval of numbers, let's say, that goes from negative 3 to 2, where you do want to include one endpoint, but you don't want to include the other. You could draw that like that. And that means all of the numbers between negative 3 and 2, including negative 3, but not including 2. And the interval notation that would go with that, it basically mirrors what you write on the number line. Square bracket on the negative 3, round parentheses on the 2. Now there is an interesting situation where you might have to consider what if what you're really interested in, and I'm just going to use positive numbers this time, What if you turn out to be interested in all the numbers that begin at 3 and go forever to the right? All of these numbers. And maybe we do want to include the 3. How do we communicate that? Well, we have to have a method of communicating that idea of going on forever and ever and ever. And the way we do that is we use an infinity. So on the right, I'm excuse me, on the left, you put a 3 with a bracket to describe that that's the left end of the, in, of the interval. And since it goes forever to the right, you put a symbol for infinity, very famous symbol for infinity, looks like an eight that fell over on its side. And then you wonder, okay, do I put a square bracket or a parentheses? Infinity is not really a number, it's a concept of going on and on and on forever, and you really never get to, quote, the end. So including infinity doesn't really make a lot of sense, and therefore whenever we write an infinity, we always use a parenthesis. What if we wanted a number line that went forever the other direction? And let's say we put some negative numbers in here. And let's say I wanted to communicate all the numbers to the left of 1, maybe not including the 1 this time, just kind of show all the variety, but going forever in this direction. So I want to commute the, communicate the idea of going forever to the left. Well, that's infinitely far, but it's infinitely far in a negative number, in negative direction. So the way we communicate that is with a negative infinity. And because the forever to the left is on the left, we put that first. Again, an infinity always will get, whether it's positive or negative, will always get a parenthesis. It comes to an end at 1, and because I did not want to include the 1, I put a parenthesis. And I think that gives you a method of describing pretty much any interval you might ever come up with. I guess maybe one more just to finish things off. What if what you're interested in is all the numbers all the way as far as you can imagine to the left and all the way as far as you can imagine to the right, going forever in both directions. Well, the way we communicate that is we start at negative infinity on the left and we go all the way to positive infinity on the right. Uh, again, infinities always get parentheses, so it would look like that. That would be the entire number line. So as you begin studying inequalities and you discover, which you're about to discover, that the solutions are whole intervals of numbers, this will describe how you can draw that on a number line and even more importantly, how you can represent it using interval notation.